Previously in part 1, I swatched all 84 colors of this Neo Color 2 set. I talked about every color in detail and at the end I showed you some close-ups of all 84 colors beautifully swatched in my swatch book. If that's something you're interested about, I suggest you go check it out. Now in this part 2, we're going to have some fun with these Neo Color 2s. We're going to test out different techniques and create a little drawing at the end. For these next tests, I'm going to use my Royal Talents Art Creation sketchbook. So I'm just going to put a little clip here so it stays flat. First of all, I want to try mixing colors directly on the paper. Let's say you get a green, uh, maybe this grass green. It's pretty intense and it's not very realistic. And so you might want to tone it down a bit. A good way to tone it down would be to mix it with an earth tone. So we could mix it with an English red or with a sienna. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we're just going to mix directly on paper. So let's say I have this green here. And I'm going to add some red on top. And let's say I think I might have added a bit too much red. So I'm just going to add more green. And let's say I want to try another one. But this time, let's try with saffron. So let's see what happens. We're going to add some water. And see you get a green that is a bit more muted more or less muted depending on how you mix things maybe we could just add a little bit of grass green here just to see what it looks like when it's not mixed with any color so see we we were able to mute it down a bit then let's say we want to use this lemon yellow and i think we could try to mix it with sapphire blue i'm sure we would get something very pretty you know, we could just add a little bit and then see what happens and then we can always add more. This is very cute. And then what I can do is I don't have to wait for it to get dry. I can just add more on top of the wet paint. I can leave it like this or I can add a bit more water. Just be careful because some paper might not want to take too much water. So I could blend it more or I could leave it like that. I like the texture that we see. But if I had waited for it to dry completely, then I'm pretty sure I could have gotten a result that would be a bit more uniform. But let's try to do the opposite. Okay, so I'm adding a bit of yellow and we get a different kind of mix that is so pretty. This is what happens sometimes when you mix directly on the paper, you get a bit of color that transfers to the pastel. So if you don't like that, you can always get rid of it by drawing on another piece of paper. Let's mix that pale green with purple. And I'm going to do the same thing here, but with less purple. Let's start with this one. So we get this pretty interesting color. And then we have that one where I added a lot more purple. So pretty. This is a good way of transforming your colors. One other thing that I like to do as well is Let's say I want to draw a tree and I'm not planning on using very natural colors. So sometimes what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the general shape of the tree. Let's see. Let's see. That's what it is. I'm going to draw some areas in one color. Then let's see this area as well. Then I'm going to draw another area, another color. 
sometimes I can merge the two colors together. And then let's get a final color here. We could add a bit of blue here. And then what I could do is I could add some white on top of the darkest color to make it a bit more lavender and make colors merge together a bit, create some interesting texture. Now I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I might want to add a bit more purple here so we get these two colors to merge together. So sometimes I just leave it as is because you see you get some interesting textures but sometimes I can't resist and I have to add some water just to see what's gonna happen. So I just wet an area. Maybe since the outline is a different color I'm gonna try to make it disappear a bit. And then I move on to another color. I'm going to mix the two together to create a, some kind of gradient. And same thing when we get to that purple here. Hello, he's so loud. You might hear my cat. Uh, he's grooming himself, he's so loud. <laughs> and yeah, so you, you mix like that your colors. It is very satisfying. And then here we're gonna get to the green. So sometimes I go back to the end of the swatch where the colors are not mixing, just so I, I make sure that I have, that this color remains pure, not too contaminated. But then I'm going to go back to the, color, the, the area where the colors are mixing a bit more, and then I'm gonna work on my gradient. I can go back and forth to different areas. And see now I have created an interesting looking tree. Well, we don't have the trunk or the bark yet, but I have one area. So that, that's something that I can do. Another thing that I like to do we're gonna need to use a sharp pencil. So here I have uh, the one for the color pencil, but you can use any pencil. It just needs to be sharply um, sharpened. <laughs> Let's say I wanna draw a bush. So I'm gonna do the same thing, same shape. Let's add some salmon here. And then I can add maybe a bit more of this turquoise green on top of that salmon. And then with a sharp pencil, what I can do is just add a lot more texture. I kind of, it's kind of carving a bit because there's already some waxy texture. So your pencil won't go everywhere. It's not going to be uniform. So in some areas you'll have more pencil lines. <laughs> In others you'll have none and you see you remove a little bit of the wax so this is another thing you can do to add more texture and then let's say I wanted to add a background color but something that is very pale I could add for example some ochre and I could just draw in a very pale way. Add some water. And you can almost, you can make the lines disappear pretty much and use this as a background color. You just have to be careful because you don't wanna reactivate 
But in this instance, I don't want to reactivate the bushes that I created earlier. So I, I'm going to be a bit careful. I know if you add even more water, you can, you can remove some color. You can kind of lift it. I can add a bit of tissue just to, you know, do something like this as well and wait for it to dry. So here I finished this section and here I only drew this little section here and I kind of dragged the color down. So this is always something you can do also. You don't have to draw the whole section that you want to put color on. If you want to put a lighter color, you could draw only a small section and then drag it down. Another way I can mix colors is a bit more of a fun way slash you don't know what you're gonna get. <laughs> so here I put three colors. I put a fiery orange, I put a normal orange, I put a light yellow, and then I put some jade green on top. Now I'm just going to add some water. So right now we're getting an orange and then I could add some color on top while it's wet and let's say draw some little branches in it. Let's say this is a bush. And just leave them as is. Very pretty. And this here is the color apricot. I added some water on top. Okay, now it's dry. So let's just draw on top. This is a blue sun, some texture. Here we go. Now you can draw with your watercolor pencil on top and you don't get that texture issue. It's not really an issue, but you, you can draw on top without any problems. So these are different effects that you can create with your new color tools. I really enjoy using them with my watercolor pencil. So some areas I'm going to draw with watercolor pencils and then right next to it, I'm going to use my new color tools or I'm going to mix the two in the same area, just like we did here. So there's a lot of options. The downside with these new color tools is that they can transfer. Let's say I close this page and after a while, this area here that I did not wet is still pretty greasy, you know? So it might transfer onto this page here. In this little spread, I don't really mind, but it can cause you some problems. So that's why in my sketchbook here, I put these little pieces of parchment paper in between my pages when I don't want transfer. So that's what I did, that's what you can do. Now we're going to do a small drawing. I want to use my hot pressed Arches watercolor paper. Hot pressed because of the texture. I think that this is going to go well with these. Although I have used cold press, as I said before, and it was okay as well. You just get a bit more texture. And as you can see, this area is dirty because I used some new color tools when I was doing a drawing and I had closed this and it transferred on the top here. And now it means that this first page here has some areas where there's already a bit of color transfer. So I think when I'm done with this one, I'm going to put a page to protect the papers from this top. So what I like to do often is doing the first sketch with my watercolor pencils because the sketch is going to disappear when I add water. And I'm planning on doing a very simple drawing. It's a scene that I saw during one of my walks not too long ago. So I'm just sketching quickly. I don't really mind if things are not perfect. I find that it's one of the good things with using this medium is that it tends to play a bit more. You don't have the same pressure of creating something that is perfect. So now I have my swatch book near me so I can choose my colors. I think that I want to start with the top part. So I want to start with the trees. 
I need a light color, so I'm taking light olive and maybe I'll use a little bit of lemon yellow or Chinese green. Chinese green could be good too for the lightest, lightest part. I think I want to mix the phthalo green with maybe the russet. Okay, so the bottom part here is a bit lighter. So I want to do that first. And as you can see, I'm very carefree. I'm drawing a bit like a, a kid would, but that's what's so fun with these is that you don't have to think too much. Now I wanna add some brighter, oh, see this one's broken. If you're careful, yours won't break. It's just that me, I, I get too excited and then I'm like, ah. <laughs> and yeah, that's what happens. And see how I hold them too. I don't hold them like, like this. Well, sometimes I do, but most times I just hold them in a bunch of different ways. So I see that there also are lighter areas up here. So I'm doing a little bit of scribbling. Maybe I could wet this part first. This time I don't wanna make the texture disappear completely. So I'm gonna put some water, but I'm not gonna work the paint too much. I kind of want to have some areas to where you can almost see the white of the paper because that's the sky peeking through. And here I need to be a bit more careful because I used some watercolor pencils to do the sketch. So I don't want this beautiful color to mix in my, in my tree. Sorry, it's hard to paint and talk at the same time, so I hope that it's still okay with you. Now let's have some fun with the phthalo green and the russet. So I want to focus on the areas where I know that the darkest parts are. And that's the area where I'm going to apply the most color, but then I might drag the color somewhere else in areas where the color is lighter. It's still good if I put some of this light olive because it's still the same tree. It's just that some areas of the tree are a bit darker. See, so I can mix like this, the two colors. Okay, and now let's add a bit of russet. And then we're gonna have some fun with the water. All right, let's add some water. And I'm trying to do some round brush strokes so it reminds us of the shapes of the leaves. Same as before, I'm not trying to remove 
the texture completely. I want it to be apparent still, and I also want to preserve some wider areas. So see how the russet neutralizes the phthalo green? Otherwise, this phthalo color would have been very intense and very unnatural, which is not what we're looking for right now. We still get peaks here and there of that phthalo blue, phthalo green, I mean, that is not affected by the russet, which is fine, but if we had a very big area of phthalo blue, uh, green, sorry, then I think it would be a bit more shocking. And you see, I'm working very fast. I don't always work like that, but these new color too inspired me to be a bit more playful. So I tend to be looser when I work with them. So now I'm thinking that we need a bit more color down and see how I can pick up some color from higher above and then I just bring it down here. So I don't have to apply more color. I can just go pick it up. Okay, now we can let this dry and work on this area here. For this area, I feel like I'm gonna use a mix of watercolor pencil and new color too. So I would like to work on this red door first. So I think I'm going to use Alizarin Crimson. Yeah, a very pretty color. We have a lock too that I did not draw, but I would like to add it. You know, I think I'm going to use the beige. This color that was so weird to me. I'm going to use it, but I think I'm going to leave it for the end when everything is dry. Yeah, let's do that. There's another technique that I did not show you. I'm going to show you right now. Let's use burnt sienna as well. What you can do is wet your brush and just go grab the color directly on your new color too. And then you can use it. Let's say here we want to draw the darkest areas first. We can do that. Because sometimes the, the new color tools are, you know, they're a bit chunkier. So for details, it can be harder to use. That's why I tend to use my watercolor pencils as well. But you could do that. You could just use a small brush and work on your details this way. You could create some splatter here, which I did by mistake, but that's fine. And now since we already had a layer that was a watercolor pencil, the new color too that I'm adding on top is merging with the color that was underneath. So for me, it doesn't change much because I had chosen a color that would fit well. But of course, if I had used a really, let's say a blue or something to create this sketch, then it would have changed this color that I'm applying right now. And maybe I wouldn't have liked it. So this is something to consider. Keep that in mind. And I can start adding some color to just like this. I want to kind of replicate the wood texture. So let's do that. So I kind of like what we're doing right now. So I think I'm just going to continue, but with the laser and crimson, I could, I could draw some areas just like this. And 
and then I think some rosette too could be could be good. I really like the texture that we're getting with the mix of colors, they all merge together and here again I'm trying to preserve the texture so I'm not applying too much water and I'm trying to go over the areas pretty quickly, I don't want to go over the same area too many times otherwise it's going to make the texture disappear. And the areas that we have wet before, we can reactivate them if we, we go hard on them. So I'm trying not to reactivate them, but you see at the same time, you kind of have to work to reactivate them. So I wanted to establish where the darkest values would be first. And now they're not reactivating when I add the water. It's a good way for me to work on the shape of my drawing. So now let's do this area because it's the palest. Now we're going to do the same thing with this other side. So let's choose our colors. Um, for this, I think raw sienna for sure. Um, for the darkest parts, I could use Van Dyke brown. Oh, umber. I could use umber. I feel like using that. And then maybe we could add the russet again. So. We'll see. So let's start with the darkest part first using the umber. I'm going to do the same technique where I paint using the color on the stick, but with a paintbrush. So we're going to do the darkest part. See, I painted green here by mistake, but now I can just go over it and voila. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I think, is I'm going to put a pale layer of this color in every area that's supposed to be kind of in the shade. Oh, and see, I forgot this was supposed to be green here. So I'm gonna add some green color. And I can also add a little bit, just like I did before, to create some lines in the wood. I'm almost dry brushing at this point. Okay, I just want to add a little bit of green. Now let's add some raw sienna and some golden ochre. So let's start with golden ochre. some raw sienna Now let's add some water. I'm going to start with the lightest areas first.
And then we can introduce some darker colors like so. So I'm trying to preserve again the texture. Here I really like the texture that we have. And now I'm going to go over the darkest areas that I added here, just to blend them a bit with the rest. And I can also use that darker color somewhere else. I can pick some up here and add it to some areas as well. Now we have a first layer done. I think that what I want to do right now is put the finishing touches in. So that would be the branches of the trees. For that, I think I'm going to use a watercolor pencil because I want the lines to be sharp. Before that, I wanted to use this beige to create the locks so I can just draw on top like this. And I like to leave some areas not fully drawn. I think that it adds a little bit of interest. Now I'm using my Intense Watercolor Pencil and the color Bark. For this, you could use a regular colored pencil, especially if you don't want to risk having it reactivate. But I don't mind and I really like this color and also I have way more watercolor pencils than I have regular colored pencils. So that's why I'm using it. So I'm just going to draw some trees now. And this is this is another time where you can just have some fun. You don't have to draw anything perfectly. It doesn't have to be the exact same thing as your reference image. In this instance, there's areas where it's harder to draw on top of. Probably the new color too wasn't fully wet, but it's fine because it just adds more natural texture. Maybe there's a leaf on top of that branch. That's why we don't see that branch fully. So it's something that you can embrace easily. Okay, I think I like it like this. I just want to add one more thing, which is a little bit of darker color. So I'm going to try to pick some up here and just add some darker color. I don't know if it's going to work. Maybe I'm going to need to go get my new color tools again. I think we're fine. Just want to add a bit more dimension to these things here. So let's remove the tape and see what we got.
so cute. I think that this concludes this video. If you're still here, please let me know in the comments because I know that this was a long video. I think it was pretty thorough though, but if there's anything that you feel like I've missed, something you would like me to test, please let me know as well. But I have to say that I am truly in love with these Carandash Neo Color tools. These are so fun to use. And this is the little drawing that we did. Isn't it cute? And what's fun is that you should see my reference picture. In fact, I'm going to show you here. It's not that pretty, but what I like to do is when I walk around, I take some pictures of random stuff that I see during my walks and you can turn an ugly picture into a nice reference picture, which is a good idea for a future video. Let's do that at some point soon. I think it would be really good because I remember when I started painting, I had a lot of trouble with reference pictures. I didn't know where to find my reference pictures. I thought that I didn't have anything to draw. I didn't have any worthy pictures in my phone or I didn't have access to anything beautiful around me, but that's not true. It's just a matter of perspective. But I think this is something that can be trained. You have to train your eye into seeing the potential of what is around you. Anyway, that's for a future video. Let me know if you would be interested in seeing something like that. But in the meantime, we did this lovely little painting. Oh, and another thing about this reference picture, as you saw, this was a vertical picture, but I just added some length. It's so cute. It's so classic of a Montreal little green alley. We have those a lot near where I live. So for me, it's like a classic Montreal picture. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I'll show you a little close up of this, but I will see you next week with another video. Take care. Bye.